All right, new day and another laptop that needs to be saved, and this time we have an M17R3, and this is kind of an interesting one. The customer sent this in because they cannot install the graphics driver, so there's something wrong with the GPU. They have a RTX 2080 Super in this machine. They've reinstalled Windows 10, reinstalled Windows 11 several times. They just cannot get the driver to activate, so I haven't taken a look at this yet. Let's take a look together and see if we can get this figured out. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We'll get it booted up into an operating system so we can take a look here. So whenever we have a graphics driver issue, it generally points to some sort of issue with either the, the GPU silicon itself or it's gonna be the VRAM modules. And so we wanna see what error code we're getting in Windows. So let me get it booted up. All right, so I'm logged into their operating system here. They don't have all the test tools that we I usually use, so I may end up booting into my own test operating system, but they have done fresh installs of Windows, of Windows 10, Windows 11, and usually that means that there's some sort of issue with the actual hardware, not the software, if they cannot install the, the driver. Let me brighten the screen up for you. And let's get the device manager pulled up. And I just want to see if the uh, GPU is actually registered in here. So I don't see an issue at this point. And it looks like the 2080 Super is installed and functioning just fine. That's what it says right here. So I'm not really sure why they sent this in then, if they said that they couldn't get the driver to work, because usually we would have some sort of error on here. If I pull it up here, it looks like device is working properly. Let's install a, a stress test tool and let's go ahead and stress that GPU and see what happens. All right, I have my GPU stress test tool. I'm using Furmark. This will run the, the GPU at full uh, capacity, make sure that everything's working on it. They could have some sort of intermittent issue where the GPU kind of disconnects or stops working or it's every other boot or something like that. I've seen that issue happen. So right now I do see that it is detecting it. So we do have the NVIDIA graphics cards detected here. So I have it selected. I'm gonna hit run. Let's see if it actually works. Otherwise we're gonna get a, a reboot most likely. There we go. So it starts lagging and the whole system's frozen. So most likely it means that the silicon's fine, the GPU's fine. I bet we have an issue with one of the VRAM modules. Really the only way that we're gonna be able to tell what's going, see the whole thing is actually still moving, but it is frozen up. And this the whole thing, I'm gonna have to cancel out of this. But when we have an issue with a VRAM module, it's like whenever you start filling up every single VRAM uh, or the video memory for the video card, uh, whenever we start filling up each one of those, when we start running the stress test, we run into one of the modules that are actually failing or bad. Maybe it has a bad trace or pad or something like that, or it's the actual module itself. All right, I went ahead and rebooted the computer. Um, so since it locked up running Firmark, I wanted to see now if the GPU is throwing that error because the thing is, is that Whenever you have a GPU failing like this, we should get it to throw an error at some point. And we're still, it's still saying it's actually functioning properly, which is not right, um, because we do know whenever we have it, um, whenever we run that stress test, it starts to fail. Um, let me reboot it a couple more times. I wanna see if I can get the error to show up because what we're looking for is an error 43 um, that will point towards some sort of VRAM issue and then we can, uh, run those other tests. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so if you look closely here, you do see a yellow exclamation point on the NVIDIA GPU graphics card. It took me a few different reboots to, in order to get to this, but um, at one point it did lock up even. So we are getting an error code 43. Uh, that does point to some sort of VRAN module or some, it, it basically is giving a generic error saying that the device has stopped working. But I'm gonna close this out. Let's go ahead and boot into uh, mods and mats and then we'll run a full diagnostics on the graphics card. It will tell me which VRAN module is actually failing or bad. And we can see about getting that replaced and see if that fixes the issue. The problem with that is sometimes it's actually underneath the silicon. It's gonna be some sort of trace or something or a broken uh, pad underneath the, the GPU itself. And at that point, we would have to do a pull and reball the, the chip and that's not something we do here. So let's boot in the mods and mats and see if we can identify which VRAM module is failing. I will need to pull the bottom off. I have a special SSD that I'm gonna install that we're gonna boot off of. So I need to remove their SSDs out of here. Oh, one thing I do notice is we do have a, a lot of dirt in here. <laughs> These fans, this one looks pretty clean, but this one looks extra dirty. So this machine's probably been overheating for a while, and that's what's probably causing the issue with uh, the graphics card. So remember, kids, keep your laptops clean. All right, so here's my SSD that I have prepared that has bonds and mats, which is a utility that NVIDIA, I think, uses internally. I don't know. I found it online, so you can go look for it. So I have this SSD set up. We're just going to boot right off of that, and then that way we can run the uh, diagnostics, and it will go through and test each one of the VRAM modules. All right, so I booted into my mats and mods utility here. This is a 2080 Super, so we have a 2080 Super right here. We'll just do the uh, 2080 driver right there. So we'll have to go into that directory. 
All right, now we're in this directory. There's a bunch of utilities. We got to run this command. I'll put a link to the website that shows you how to run all these utilities in the video description, but let me pull it up. All right, so this is the repair.wiki for the NVIDIA repair guide. So we're going to be running the mats and mods using no video output because this is a laptop. You're going to have the Intel as the main output, and then you're going to have the NVIDIA as the secondary. So we have to run this command first. It's actually a little bit modified. It should be uh, OQA at the end. So we'll run that first. OQA at the end. So what this is doing is it's basically just running a test config here that's going to configure the, the next program that we're going to run uh, to run on the secondary card. Um, so the next command we need to run is going to be this one right here. It's going to be the mats. Um, this is the, the card index number. We're going to be index number one. So it's there's zero and one. We're going to do one. And then we're going to run a memory test of 50 megs in this area right here. So let's get that run. And then we want to pipe this output to less. So that way it just prints out on the screen so we don't have to go find the output file. So we're going to do it like that. I know this is hard to see. It's hard to see for me. But I'm going to run that. It's going to take a little while to run. It's going to run the GPU um, at full max. It's actually going to fill up all the memory uh, modules. So we're going to let that run. This will take about five minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, it's done running. Uh, so we have a bunch of stuff outputted on the screen. But if I hit enter, we'll actually see the output to the file here. And I do see we do have memory errors. So this is showing us all the different VRAM modules. And it looks like uh, module B1 is the one that has a bunch of uh, write errors, it looks like. So that's the module that we're going to be replacing. Now, there is a chance that the issue is underneath the GPU. But what I usually do is I just change out that module and see if it fixes the issue. And you can see that all the other output here with all these different errors that were written there. So let me show you the orientation of how it's laid out. It's on that same repair wiki. So this is the output of this command. And so if we look at this picture here, so based on this picture, you can look at the chip orientation. This will be pen one. Usually I just go by the, the text here and then I'm going to go on the opposite corner and then we're going to go counterclockwise. This is going to be A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0, D1, D0, and, and so on. If it went all the way around, if you have more modules. The one that we have failing is our B1 chip, so it's going to be our third one up. Now, it may not be set up in this exact orientation, so when we get the whole thing pulled apart, we'll be able to see that. But we're going to have to pull the whole motherboard out because we have to pull the heatsink off. We'll put this on a, a preheater warmer, and then we'll pull that module off. And we will be cleaning out these fans. Uh, <laughs> I bet this thing has been running hot for a long time. And so that's definitely what has caused this issue in the first place. I'll skip ahead. I'll just get the motherboard pulled out. All right. And the motherboard is out. And so we can definitely see how dirty this thing is. Uh, <laughs> We had plenty of dust over here. This other fan actually is dirty. Um, it's just not as dirty on the back side as it is on the uh, front side here. I bet that we have a bunch of dust all within these fans right here. Actually, I want to take a look right now because most people will try to figure out why things fail. And most of the time it's because of heat. So uh, let me unplug these fans. We're going to tilt this back. I, I just want you to see. So we'll just unscrew the fans from the heat sink and we'll be able to take a look. Uh, a lot of times what ends up happening is it builds up almost like dryer lint um, inside your dryer from washing your clothes. All right, you ready? Here we go. Um, oh, well, it's bad. It's just not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I have seen stuff that was so dirty, I'm surprised that the thing even stayed cool at all. It's still plenty dusty, but it's not, you know, the worst that I've seen. Uh, but we will blow all this out. Maybe I'll just blow it right now since we have it all opened up. Uh, there you go. I just quickly blew it out. Um, looks way better. And uh, when we put it back together, it should stay a lot cooler now. So that was a quick little detour. So let's pull this heatsink off. We will need to get to um, the GPU because we need to access those VRAM modules that are around the GPU. And we will point out which one is failing or has failed, has right errors. The fact that the card fails sometimes and, and not other times, you know, I don't know if, the, if it's heat related. So like on a cold start, maybe it doesn't fail until it gets hot. If it's something like that, then we probably have a, a broken trace, but it doesn't mean that that is repairable. Okay. So we're going to just rock this off of here and what's going on here? Got a piece of tape. There we go. So this looks like it might be stock. 
think so. Yeah, I think this is stock thermal paste. It's not too dry, but it does almost start to have the appearance of like clay. And so this is the RAM. This, this motherboard actually has RAM built on the board. So you have RAM here. So CPU, RAM, and these are the VRAM modules around this. So we need to take this off. So here's the GPU and we have three modules here, three and three. So if this was gonna be our A1, our A0, our B1, our B0, our C1, C0, and D1, D0, okay? Uh, the one that's failing on the test, we saw that it was gonna be B1. Um, so this is gonna be the module that we're gonna be replacing. So when we do this, we're gonna be having to preheat the board. This is a very, very thick motherboard. It takes a long time for it to actually heat up. And so um, we'll preheat the board and then we can remove that chip. Uh, let's figure out which chip it is and see if I have any replacements. So this is gonna be a Samsung module, 4Z80325 BC. I mean, it's the HC14 version. So I think I do have some of those. All right, so I don't have any uh, donor VRAM modules that are exactly the same, but I do have a donor board has the same exact chips here. So I'm gonna pull a few of these off, that way I can keep those off to the side. Uh, well, we're gonna to have to reball those before we reinstall them. But, so let's go ahead and get these pulled off. All right, I got the donor board on the preheater here. Um, so I'm gonna be pulling these three uh, VRAM modules off. We're gonna set those aside, uh, reball them, and then we can use those as donors for future uh, repairs. And then we're just gonna put one of those onto the uh, customer's board. Hopefully that fixes the issue. There's a high likelihood that we have something else going on probably underneath the uh, GPU itself since it, it's a come in and go type of situation where it wasn't throwing an error and then it booted up and had an error, but uh, let me get these pulled off. All right, work on the first one. You add a little bit of flux to it. And you can see the board's heating up, I'm trying to get it up to 220 to 230 degrees C in order to get one of these uh, chips removed. Just waiting for the chip to get a little bit loose. And once it starts working around, then we'll grab it. There you go, it's getting loose. Get ready. Now we got a pad that's actually still stuck here. I don't know what's going on there. Let's add some more flux. There we go. Okay, we got that one off. Let's see if we can grab this next one. Okay. I'm gonna grab the last one. All right, so we got all three of those removed. Now we're gonna have to put those in a reballing jig and get them all reballed nice and new, and then we can install them, or I guess we'll have to remove the other one first. <laughs> uh, but let's, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here they are, and we will need to remove all this old solder off of there. We're only gonna do one uh, for this video, but I'll have them all done. You can see that it's smeared just a little bit. It's not a big deal. All right, I got this chip already ready to go. Let's go ahead and get the balls installed. Okay, so I have this installed in our jig here. Um, we're gonna be reballing it, and I have uh, 0.45 balls that I'm gonna be putting on here. I uh, first need to put a little bit of flux on here, but not too much. And then we'll allow the balls to stick. All right, so you can see the thin layer there, and then we're gonna put this on top. All right, and I need to move this to my chip preheater. All right, so I'm gonna come in with some low heat and low airflow. We don't wanna blow those balls around. And you can see them slowly starting to melt. And there you go. All right, so that chip's all ready to go. Let's go ahead and, and get the customer's board set up. We'll pull their old VRAM module off, get this one installed. Hopefully it fixes the issue. Of course, I did not hit record the whole time. All right, so 
I pulled off their old module. I just set the new module back in. Um, lost footage all over again. Sorry about that, guys. I just set this chip down. Um, I was able to pull their old chip off very easily. No big deal. And so this is the new one. Now I'm just now heating it. There you go, just sat in place. Um, that's the only problem with uh, pausing the video occasionally uh, to speed things up for you. I end up missing some footage. Just wanna rock this around, make sure it's sitting down there properly. There we go. All right, so we have this new module installed. I mean, there's still a chance that we have an issue under the core itself. So all of these are gonna be connecting to the GPU itself right here under all these lines. And so we could have a trace that's uh, messed up or a pad on the GPU and you would have to pull the GPU and, and put it back on. I'm not prepared to do that. That's not something that I'm gonna do within my $250 uh, board repair fee. So um, if this fix exists, then the, the customer's gonna be very happy. If not, then it's probably just gonna end up being a board replacement or just use it without the NVIDIA GPU. Well, let's go ahead and get this reassembled and test. I clean off this old thermal paste. <laughs> it's almost like clay at this point. This thing should stay a lot cooler with this new thermal paste and the clean fans, um, regardless of whether the GPU is gonna work or not. Get the rest of this dust off of here. We already blew it, but there's a little bit of remnants on here. Heat seeks installed. All right, I got their motherboard installed. Moment of truth. We're booted back up. I can see that the uh, graphics card is not throwing an error or anything. So, all right, let's go ahead and run Firmark. And you remember last time, it only rained for a couple seconds and then it just froze up. And this looks like it's holding up quite well. I do have an under uh, wattage charger on here. I only have a 240 watt charger. This thing requires a 330. So we are only running at 32 frames per second. Let me plug in their 330 watt charger, see what that does. So I switched the battery just now, and it's running at seven frames per second. Now we're plugging in their 330 watt charger. There we go, now we're up to 55 frames per second. Now we're running this at uh, 4K resolution, I believe. And so that's why it's a little bit slower. If we did frame it down a little bit, then uh, we will be able to get a faster frame rate. Um, but it is staying steady, and now we're pulling about 200 watts because I have the 330 watt charger installed. I want to go ahead and boot back into Mats and Mods, and let's run the uh, memory test again and see if it passes. All right, as you can see, we passed all the tests. All the VRAM modules are working perfectly. We're not having any issues. So this did end up fixing up this uh, laptop for this customer. It's not always the case. I've replaced plenty of those modules and it didn't fix the actual issue because it was underneath the core, but this customer got lucky. And I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And thanks for watching. I saved another laptop.